welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We're going to take a look at creating this Mac Mini icon today in Photoshop. This is another tutorial in the continued series of tutorials that Howard from Iceflow Studios and I am doing on web elements. This is inspired by a free graphic that was available on 365psd.com which is an amazing website. They give you free high quality PSDs for download, a new one every single day. Go check them out. Great website. So let's take a look at creating this. We're going to go ahead and start by just creating a new document. So we're going to go File, New, and just name the document anything you want. I'm going to go Mac Mini. And width of 1280, height of 720 is perfect. The background here is white. We're actually going to darken it up a bit. So I'm going to hit Command or Control U to bring up my hue saturation. And I'm going to reduce the light, the lightness by 80. So I'm going to say negative 80. Hit OK. And I'm going to create a new layer. So right down here, hit the New Layer icon. I'm going to double click and I'm going to name this layer Glow. I'm going to grab my brush tool now. I'm going to bring the size way up. I want to get to about 1,000. Something around 1,000 is great. Set the hardness to zero, so just a massive soft edged brush is perfect. I don't want to dust in the black. I want to set my foreground color to white, so I'm just going to hit the letter X. It's going to swap my foreground and background colors. If you don't have black and white, you can just hit the letter D. It's going to set black as your uh, foreground color and then flip white to your foreground color. Now I'm just going to click once in the center of my document, like so. Looks great. And I'm going to reduce the opacity of this uh, glow to, I don't know, 20%, something like that. So it's nice and subtle, something like that. And we're going to add a little bit of noise to it to get rid of this banding. So I'm going to go Filter, Noise, Add Noise. And we can add a good deal of noise here because we've already reduced the opacity so much. So something like 10%, you could probably even go 20% if you like. 10% uniform monochromatic, hit OK. Now what we need to do is create the base of our Mac Mini. We're going to do that using the rounded rectangle tool. I'm going to set the radius to 40 pixels, just like so. And I'm going to come up here and set the style to none. Just make sure you've got nothing going on in the style. The color doesn't really matter. We're going to set a custom gradient fill in a moment. So I'm going to draw out a shape here. And I'm going to hold down my shift icon. So I'm drawing out a perfect square. And I'm going to drop that shape. Great. I'm going to hit Command or Control A, which is going to load or select my entire document. And I've got my Move tool. We're going to align this to the very center of my document. Command or Control D to deselect. Now that we've done that, we want to go ahead and apply a gradient overlay to the shape, as well as a little shine along the bottom. We're going to use the inner shadow to do that. So let's begin by going Layer, Layer Style, Gradient Overlay. We're not really going to see that shine unless we put the gradient onto our uh, document first or onto our shape first, excuse me. So let's begin here by setting the angle to zero and set the style to reflected. Now I'm going to open up the gradient bar. The gradient's fairly simple. We're going to add a third stop in here just by clicking below this gradient bar and I'm going to move it to a location of 60%. We're going to set the black stop here to the color of BF, BF, BF. Great. The second stop here, the one at 60%, I'm going to set to E, D, E, D, E, D. And then this stop all the way over here to the right, we're going to set to D9, D9, D9. There we go. Hit OK. And hit OK again. So just like that, we've created our first gradient. Go ahead and add the inner shadow. This is going to serve as our sort of little shine. You can see it's giving us that shadow. We don't want shadow, though. We want shine. So let's change the blend mode to normal and change the color to white. Hit OK. And we're going to set the opacity to 100%. I'm going to uncheck Use Global Light, and we're going to set the angle to negative 90. You can see we're getting this white running along the base. Awesome. We're going to get rid of the size. The size is essentially the blur of the shadow. We don't want any of that. And we're going to set the distance to one pixel. So it's just a little, very subtle highlight running along the base of our shape. And you can even change the blend mode to something like Overlay if you wanted to really uh, make sure it interacts with your gradient. In this case, it's not going to make a huge difference, but we're going to do it anyway. Go ahead and hit OK. Let's just rename this layer first. So I'm going to double click on the name and I'm going to call it Mini just because it's sort of the base of our Mac Mini. And I'm going to duplicate it, Command or Control J. I'm going to rename this layer Inset and I'm going to right click here and I'm sort of moving off screen. And I'm just going to hit Clear Layer Style. You can also do that by going Layer, Layer Style, Clear Layer Style. Once we've done that, we need to resize this a little bit. So hit Command or Control T. Hold down your Shift and Alt. That'd be Shift and Option on the Mac keys and drag this shape inward a little bit, just so you can see the metal ring running around the outside. That might be a little bit too much. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. There we go. And commit those changes. You can hit your Enter key, Return key, or just hit the little check icon. Once we've done that, we need to apply a color overlay. So let's go Layer, Layer Style, Color Overlay. And the color overlay is pretty simple and straightforward. 
go ahead and select the color and I happen to know the color we want is EF, EF, EF. Hit OK. And the next thing we need to do with this is apply an inner glow. So go ahead and tick on inner glow and we're going to set the blend mode to normal and I'm going to set the color to black. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to boost the size way up. Let's go up to about 55 so it's huge and just reduce the opacity way down to about 15%. Commit those changes. So we're going to really make this thing look a bit 3D now. We're going to select the mini layer and we're going to duplicate it. Command or Control J. And we're going to clear those layer styles. Layer, layer style, clear layer style. Now that we've done that, drag it beneath the mini layer in your layers panel. And we're going to name this base. This is going to sort of be the base, what looks like the sides and the bottom of our Mac mini. And I'm going to shift it or nudge it downward at 30 pixels. So with the move tool selected, I'm going to hold down my shift key and just hit the down arrow key once, twice, three times. There we go. And now that we've done that, we need to just add a drop shadow and a gradient overlay to this. And it's really going to begin to add some really cool depth to this shape that we've created. So let's go layer, layer style. Let's actually start with the gradient overlay and we'll add the drop shadow afterward once it's, you know, we're starting to see that depth. So go ahead and hit gradient overlay. And we need to create uh, a gradient that is a, using the style of reflected. Remember we set the reflected gradient for the top. So we're going to use reflected again here. And we're going to set the angle to zero degrees again. Now we need to just edit our gradient. So we've got a three stop gradient again. We're going to leave our stop over here at 100. We're going to set a stop in here at about 80%. And we're going to drag this stop up to about 30%. Right about there. Well, 31, 30, 31, whatever. So the stop at 30% and the stop at 100%. We want them both to be 8C, 8... Oh, let's select that. Let's go 8C, 8C, 8C. There we go. A nice sort of medium darkish gray. And we're going to do the same for the stop up here at 100. Excuse me, 8C, 8C, 8C. Cool. And then the stop that is colored white right now, we just need to give it a lighter gray. White is too bright. So let's go D9, D9, D9. Like so. Hit OK and hit OK. And you can see that's sort of the base of our shape. You can give it a lighter gray in the middle there if you like. I'm going to stick with what I've got happening here. And then what we need to do is give it a drop shadow. So go ahead and select drop shadow. And black is perfect. Let's set the blend mode to normal. Uncheck use global light and set the angle to 90 degrees. We're going to set the distance to 2 pixels uh, and the size to 10. So it's going to have a, a fairly large blur on it. And then just reduce the opacity. There we go to 60%. Go ahead and hit OK. The next step would be to add the Apple logo to the top. However, I don't want to go out into the web and search through all those logos and stuff. So I'm just going to use Photoshop's custom shape tool here. And I'm going to drop in this spade here. Where is it? Right up here. There it is. I'm going to drop in this shape. I'm going to select my topmost layer here. And if you have a path selected, see that the path is selected there? You don't want to start drawing your shape because it's going to draw sort of in that vector mask. So just hit your Enter Return key to deselect that path. Hold down your Shift key and draw the shape you like. There we go. Now you can see we're getting some layer styles here. So I can just go up here to the Tool Options bar and just say, hey, get rid of all those styles. And the other thing I want to do is make sure that this uh, shape is filled with the color of black. So double click on the white there in the Layers panel, fill it with black. And we're just going to reduce the opacity of this to 20%. So something like that is cool. And to make sure we have it aligned to the top, control click or command click one of your vector masks for the top of the Mac Mini. With the move tool, go ahead and just align it to the center. There we go. Command or control D to deselect. Grab your rounded rectangle tool now. And we can leave the radius at 40. That doesn't really matter. Before we even draw a shape, I can just go in there and kill off styles that would be appearing. And let's draw a slot in the front of our Mac Mini. Something like that. And of course, this needs to be black. So double click there and just fill it with black. There we go. Great. And again, to center this up, you can just load the base as a selection. Something like that. Hit V, which is the hotkey for your Move tool, and align it along that vertical axis. There we go. And now again, we want to grab our rounded rectangle tool. In this case, we're going to reduce the corner radius to 4 pixels. So down from 40 to 4. And I'm actually going to zoom in here. We're going to draw what is the initial portion of the plug plugged into the back of our computer. There we go, just like that. And we're going to rename this layer plug. I do want this layer to be filled with the color white. That's important because of what we're going to do with a gradient in just a moment. So if it's a different color, you're just going to want to double click and make sure that you set it to white. Let's go layer, layer style, drop shadow. Let's give this guy a drop shadow first and foremost. 
and we're going to set the opacity to 20%. We're going to uncheck Use Global Light. We're going to set it to an angle of negative 90, distance of 2, and a size of 2. We're also going to give this guy an inner glow. Now, you're not really going to see the inner glow because it is going to be a white inner glow. So until we add our gradient in just a moment, you're not going to see this. So I'm just going based on some things I've got written down here. I know that I need an opacity of 50, and the size remains at 5 pixels. Blend mode of screen and a color of white are all perfect. Let's go ahead and add this gradient overlay. Now, with the gradient overlay, we're just going to tweak the gradient that we've got here just a little bit. We're essentially going to make the white here just a light gray, EF, EF, EF. So very, very light gray. Hit OK. Hit OK again. And we're just going to rotate this guy to an angle of 0 degrees. Runs from left to right. And then reduce the opacity down to about 30%. So you can see it's going to give us a nice subtle gradient just sweeping across our plug. Go ahead and hit OK. What I want to do now is drag this plug obviously beneath our Mac Mini layers because normally the plug is not attached in that way. So I'm going to drag it all the way beneath all of our Mac Mini layers. There we go. And if I deselect that layer, you can see it looks pretty cool hanging out up there. What I'm going to do now, make sure you've got the plug layer selected. That's, that's a little important here. And we're going to grab the rectangle, the rounded rectangle tool again, excuse me. We're going to zoom in on this, and I'm going to draw the cord coming out of our little power plug here. I'm zooming in so I can just center it up nicely. And what's happening is we're using that same style that we just had on the layer beneath. So I don't need to worry about reapplying all those styles. The color of the fill is white, exactly as I wish. And all I need to do now is, well, let's just rename this layer cord so we don't lose track of it, and just drag it beneath the plug layer. That's sort of how it would be interacting in real life. Now I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. And you can see we're really making some great progress on our Mac Mini. All that's left to do is add a little disk that would be sliding into the slot on the front of this and mask it off. So I've got a PNG, which I'm going to drag into Photoshop right here and just drop it in as a smart object. There it is. If you want to learn how to make this CD, I have a tutorial on tutvid.com on making these disks. It's very, very easy to do. I'm going to commit this change. This is just a PNG, basically, that I exported out of uh, that PSD file where I created this CD. I'm going to drag this guy all the way up to the top because we want the CD to appear above the slot. And this layer right here, that's the slot. So I'm going to select the CD, Command or Control T, and really size this guy way down. Something like that. That might be, uh, that's actually right about perfect. Hit Enter or Return to commit those changes. Use your Move tool. Just move him right into position where you want him. And I want this guy to be just sticking out, just be more than halfway sticking out of the slot. So something like that is good. Grab your rectangular marquee tool and make a nice big selection and cut halfway across your slot. So halfway through the slot, kind of like that. I'm going to move it up one pixel. There we go, just like that. And then hold down your Alt or Option key and select the Add Layer Mask icon. If you're not comfortable doing that, you can go Layer, Layer Mask, Hide Selection. You can see it hides the CD. Now to add just a, even a little bit more realism to this, before you do anything else, what you need to do is go Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And you're actually going to blur the mask. You can see the edges of our mask are being blurred. And check out the edge of the disk. If we shut off Preview, you can see it goes from just a sharp cut right into the, the Mac Mini to just a little bit of what looks like a shadow as if we're naturally sliding that disk right into the front of the Mac Mini. So go ahead and accept that. And something else that's good to do is just unlock the mask and this disk layer just in case you want to move this disk in a little bit further. Oh, I still have the mask selected. Make sure you select the layer by just selecting the thumbnail there. You can move the disk further into the Mac Mini or you can pull it further out just like that. I like it kind of like that. So let's zoom out and there you have it. We've created a Mac Mini. We've created the disk fitting into the slot uh, in the front of it and it's a fully completed little computer for you. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a thing or two. Thanks so much for checking out this video. Make sure you go check out the website. That's www.tutvid.com for more great free video tutorials. Follow Tutvid on Facebook and at Tutvid on Twitter. Thanks for watching.